Okay, so um, I will put up the homework. Okay, so I will see you at the Spanish workshop tomorrow. And even more than Friday, I will see you here Monday in the room. Can you do Monday in the school? Anyway, who wants to help? Who's got a pen on the table? I know Jared doesn't have one. Did you have anything? Okay. Raise your voice, everyone. A times x minus h squared plus k. When you look at that, how do you know what the vertex of the parabola is? Hk with the vertex. This was a horizontal shift left, right. This was a vertical shift up, down. And this was a stretch, a shrink, or a reflection. Remember that? Raise your hand if you remember talking about those things in high school. Okay, um, so now um, go ahead and do what we did yesterday in number two. So I'll start computing the square. I'm going to change it to green. So it's x <coughs> squared minus square root. Did you already do it? Yeah. Now look at that whole If you have one or two of them, I want you to look and see them and find your sum from the inside and find the sum from the outside. Is this it? Did I write down right? Mm, no, yes. Okay, so um, first you have to move the, this problem is a formulary, it can be factored, nothing multiplies to 18 and adds to negative 4, and so they move C to the other side. <coughs> and I put in C as my escape there, if you look in here, I can put in And now we know what x is. It's the square root of minus x squared over 18. And if I want to get x, you would rather you want to do the answer in some other spot than the square root of minus x squared. Okay. 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 Okay.
Here's your quadratic. So right here is very close to vertex point. So you get a binomial square just like so you know thing works out equal to zero. So I'll take the five and cut it back a little. And we have x plus three squared <coughs> minus five equals zero. Write that as a function. And there's your vertex point. Vertex that goes. Okay. See how the numbers totally different now? So it's a nice and easy one. You can look at that. It's totally different than what the calculator is doing. Okay. So 
So let me get a gun back to that perfect square shot of my nails. And then I put it on your quiz that I remember. Um, I had to do this quiz. I don't have time. Over the weekend, I won't if you had a drug. So I'm wondering if I never do this again with you. And I say as a test question, could you try to answer it for like a 20 minute answer? So as you're doing something in the square, I want you to stop. When we start to homework today, I want you to stop your work. Where's vertex form in all your work? Okay. Let's check homework and let's see that vertex form. So we did 21 to 28, 21, 24, 25, 26, 28, 27. I didn't finish yet. Let's start by checking 27. I still remember doing that. Um, did anybody get 27 right? Negative 2 plus or minus 2i. All right. Very good. Um, I am now going to do 23. Can you have a better yet? I see the text form. Anybody get 23 right? Okay. Um, okay, one point extra credit for somebody who could tell me the vertex in 23. What is the vertex looking at it? Denia. That's a two, I'm right there. Negative two, negative six. Good job. All right, let's head to number 21 and 22. All right, can anybody tell me the vertex in 21 for X? Go ahead, Tristan. Negative two, negative six. Good job. The only reason I say it's negative is because in the parentheses, the H value is always opposite of how it looks. Good job. All right, 22. Um, one point extra credit. Who's got the vertex of 22? Good job. Negative one, negative seven. Right there in your word, you're not doing it. You see a vertex. It's all five. Two, is it at least 24? Is this 25? All right, um, vertex in 25. Who can tell me the vertex in 25? Jeff? Yeah. 85. I got 85. And um, 26, what's the vertex in 26, Hunter? Uh, negative 4, positive 1. Yeah, got it. Okay, 27, I did 28. What's the vertex in 28? Anybody? Carmen? Isabella? Yeah, it is. Wow. I'm going to highlight where they were finding vertexes. So here and here. You add the seven fourths over before the green square root bar, you see vertex form. 
Okay, but looking at 28, um, <clears throat> this one was <clears throat> had these fractions in it, right? Like the 1 fourth, and then I got a common denominator with this negative 2 and ended up with negative 7 over 4. Um, please keep it in, in factored form. If you stopped here, I mean, you did awesome. So many things, right? But I just want to remind you, you don't leave, um, like, denominators and radicals. So I square rooted the 4, and that's where this denominator of 2 came from. show that. just did 
was used um, more frequently, and there's evidence of it in different nations, like they did it in China, and they did it in um, the Middle East. I can't think of the exact country. Um, kind of at the same time. So different places in the world happening at the same time, completely squared. Whereas the quadratic formula, they really couldn't, they really couldn't make it a thing until around the 14, 1500s. So completing the square, you learn first, it really is, um, it's a process that's used more often. And you can just see how it's used to find the, the vertex. So right now we're gonna start with ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're gonna solve this for x. Um, using completing the square. And in the end, it's going to look like the quadratic formula. So I'm going to show you how to start with this and end with the formula. You guys have seen the formula, but you've probably never seen where it came from, right? So um, <clears throat> the first thing we do, just like um, 27 and 28, is we'll divide both sides by A. And then we would move C over, right? So what we're doing is we're going from standard form, we're going through the process of completing the square without any numbers. Pretty challenging. It's okay if you hate it. A couple of people will hang in there and that's great. So now let's try B over C squared. This is the really easy part that most people don't want to do. So B is actually B over A, since we don't have numbers. We're going to put that over here and square it. So if you don't want to do all that, you can just chill and, and look at my answer. Okay, but it's, it's not too much. So this is actually B over A divided by 2 over 1. That's a fraction. So that's b over a times 1 over 2, because b multiplied by the reciprocal. And so that's um, b over 2a squared. So that's b squared over 4a squared. This is not a test question. I would never make you do this for credit. This is just something I'm putting out here. For people who want to know where did this formula come from. <laughs> okay, so after we do b over 2 squared, we always factor by square rooting. Um, so my factor would be x plus something squared. Gosh, what would that be? So how would I square root b squared over 4a squared? Well, that's just going to be b over 2a. Okay, so to factor this crazy expression, I'm just square rooting this, and that's just b over 2a. We okay? Does anybody have a question or want me to go back? Okay. So our next step in the process is the square root. But I'm actually going to go ahead and, and make this look simpler. Like that looks pretty wild. So I'm going to get a common denominator. Again, if you don't even want to do this part, it's okay. The common denominator between a and 4a squared is 4a squared. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 4a. And that's how I'm creating a common denominator with variables. So that'll be negative 4ac all over a plus b squared over... Oops, that's now a common denominator over 4a squared 
So if I add across the top, now that I have a common denominator, I'll write that as one numerator. So that's, I got my common denominator, so now I can just write b squared minus 4ac. And everybody who knows the quadratic formula knows b squared minus 4ac is in it. Does that sound familiar? There it is. So I'm almost done. Two more steps. The next step in completing the square is square rooting both sides. Okay, that's looking really familiar. We're almost there. We can almost see how in 1500, this guy came up with the quadratic formula. I'll subtract b over 2a. And that there is the quadratic formula. I can break it down a little bit more. I can simplify it a little bit more. <coughs> if I, for instance, we know we'd only graph one denominator, so I'm going to square root that. Yeah, that's not bad. And now, since they have the same denominator here, I can write it as one fraction. <clears throat> and this is the quadratic formula. Um, so in Algebra 1, <clears throat> it's part of the curriculum. It's part of the curriculum in Algebra 2 that you can use it and solve using it. You don't have to prove it the way we just did. We proved it using the completing the square process. Um, but now your real job is to memorize it and to plug in. So if you only know A, B, and C, you can plug in those numbers here and it'll tell you X. So this will solve any quadratic equation as long as you have A, B, and C. Okay. I hope you guys don't feel like that was a waste of time. Look at all those steps. Maybe you do, it's okay. Um, I will now tell you your assignment. And I'm going to do it with you. You're going to use the quadratic formula to solve. It's chapter 3.4. which is page 237, and you're doing six problems, one through six. And that's it. Yeah, well, that's classwork, that's homework, and this is done. You don't have to think about math again until next Monday, okay? Six quadratic final problems. Now, I know some of y'all have done it, and right? some of you haven't. So I'm going to do, like, these first two, I'm going to help you plug in and simplify. Um, and doing it in Algebra 2 is a little more complex than Algebra 1, so expect to have some questions. Maybe we're going to play a game right try to do the quadratic formula. I think you should probably see where the quadratic formula came from. This is eight minutes to see where that formula came from. So I know these kids, they're interested in that. They want to know right where that, right how, 
why does that work anyway so many people do ask all the time like if i don't show you that in two days people will be like Smith, so well why does that work you know and now i can go back to that slide and i can be like well this this and this is why you do so i just answered the why keep asking why guys and we'll keep doing more stuff like that i'm just kidding don't be scared of everybody <laughs> I just saw Brady's extra tent. Is it like a weekend assignment? Like, go home and figure out how to complete this game. It's not really funny. I'm just kidding. It's a video game. Yeah. 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 So I know some of your teachers teach you instead of memorizing negative B plus or minus, they say opposite B. And so um, if you like to think about that as opposite B, if, if that's a, a place where you get confused. So since B was negative, in the front will end up with a positive. Yeah. And then you guys, right here is where um, really the most important bit happens. Okay, just getting those signs right under the water flow is so important. So I did um, B squared, which is negative 4 squared, 15. So um, this is what I'll do is negative 4 times 1, negative 4 times 3, negative 4. Who's got a question so far and has plugged in or simplified your formula? Oh, my life is a bitch. You need to wait a minute? Okay. So, let me write this term on this board for you. First off, do you know where I got A, B, C from? A, B, C. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's just taking off then. Then we just plug A, B, C one by one into this rewritten standard form formula. You see the big bar right there? This one here. Yeah, that's why I'm putting it here. So it's like you're trying to help you to write it the right way. So now I'm plugging in, like I'll put the B value here. The B value here, the A value here, the C value here, and A value here. And then it's just getting the order of operations correct. And it really does take practice. There's a lot you learn how to do. Oh, 
Should I do number two next or um, three or anybody we have a request? Number three, what were you on? All right, so I'm going to jump to three. I heard three is a little more difficult. So I got A equals one, B equals six, and C equals 15. Raise your hand if you can count to three. Can anybody confirm the highlighted portion of number three? I got a one time. Okay, great. So then moving from here to here is something you did not do in algebra one. So even if your algebra one teacher like 
really did the quadratic formula with you a lot. You didn't do any imaginary numbers, and you probably didn't simplify radicals until geometry. I don't know. So, so finishing this correctly is where you're strengthening your skills with this formula. Please stop, and if you've done it, look at your numbers. Ask me like exactly where your number went different, and let's just pass it out. Where's your number different, and why? Thank you.